Hello, my name is Sean Conley. I'm the state soybean and small grain specialist at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. And today I'm going to quickly walk us through um, how to do a visual guide to soybean growth staging. And again, it's very important and critical to understand how to properly growth stage soybeans so that we can make management decisions in a timely manner. So it all starts with the seed and we're gonna start with the germination process. Um, once we place a seed into the soil and we have good seed soil contact, uh, we generally takes about uh, seven to 14 days for a soybean to germinate and begin the emergence process. Um, germination begins with the seed absorbing about 50% of its weight in water. And this is called the imbibition period where we can see right here in this picture. Um, the optimal soil temperature is between 60 to 70 degrees, but often with our earlier planting today's, we're putting soybeans in below 50 in that 45 to 50 degree Fahrenheit temperature. So again, what we tend to see is with these earlier plantings, we can have soybeans seed in the ground for up to, up to three weeks. The next growth stage following the germination process is actually emergence or the VE growth stage. And this is when the codlings are above the soil surface. Uh, soybean practice is what we call epigeal emergence where the codlings come above the ground and it's often being pulled through the ground once sunlight hits uh, the hypocotyl and we have that hook out, elongate cells and pulls those codlings through that soil um, and we have the emergence occur. Um, typically, we like to see our soybeans planted in that three quarters to an inch and a half deep um, and that gives us a, a timely manner in order to not have any issues uh, with the emergence process to begin with. The next growth grow stage we're dealing with would be VC, or this is the, the cotyledon stage, or we see the unifoliate leaves, um, as we could see right here. Uh, the unifoliate leaves are simple, and they consist of a single leaf blade. From this point forward, we'll have trifoliates, uh, but again, the unifoliates have single leaf blades. Uh, just like the cotyledons, the unifoliates are opposite of each other. From this point forward, the next leaves will be coming in an alternate uh, emergence process. Now, there's a couple caveats I want to introduce here as we start going into the growth staging process. And there are two different methods. Um, typically, in academia, we use a fair and cavernous method, uh, which was done at Iowa State University. And Basically, this is what we see in the academic settings and the journal articles. Um, however, about 15 years ago, uh, Pella Peterson brought the hybrid method. And the hybrid method is when we count um, open trifoliate leaves or open leaves. And typically what we mean by open is those leaf margins are not touching, as we see in this picture, where they're obviously fully open like we see right here. So as we go forward, um, you'll be seeing two different colors. The blue colors uh, refer to how you can grow stage using the hybrid method. And the orange colors are the how we would be grow staging using the fair and cavernous method. But again, given the practitioners typically follow this hybrid method, that's the one that I'm gonna use throughout the rest of this presentation and talk. Um, the first open trifoliate is uh, the would be the V1 growth stage, uh, but we have a one open trifoliate where the leaf margins are not long, are no longer touching. Uh, this is the second leaf node, and all nodes follow are singular and alternate as on the stem, as I had indicated earlier. This is when nitrogen fixing nodules begin to form on the roots. Uh, so again, we typically do not see fixation beginning at the V1 growth stage, but this is when we typically see nodulation beginning to occur. The next growth stage here is uh, the V2. We have two open trifoliates. Um, these are where we see, start to begin to see lateral roots are growing rapidly. Uh, again, at this growth stage is typically when we see nitrogen fixation begin. And we can see the root nodules uh, occurring here at this, on this picture of the roots. This is typically when we want to make sure the weeds are clean and free in a soybean field. Um, I know up to this point, we were dealing a lot with just post-emergence glyphosate applications, but from this V2 growth stage forward is when we have any weed competition can significantly reduce um, yield in, in soybean. The next growth stage that we're looking at is the V3 growth stage, where again, we see three open trifoliates. Um, this is again at that point where we start to see that weed loss really take off. At this point, we can see up to a nine to 10% yield loss when we see weeds at the B3 growth stage. So again, stay, start clean, stay clean is the mantra for soybean production. 
specifically given the issues we are having with glyphosate resistant weeds. This is a vor the V4 growth stage where we have four open trifoliates. Um, typically we start seeing flower buds occurring somewhere between the V4 and the V6 growth stage. And at this point, even if we have a hail damage or some type of an, of, of an issue with um, defoliation, plants can recover from 100% defoliation at this growth stage up to V4 and really not have any minimal risk for yield losses. And again, given the issues with glyphosate, glyphosate resistant weeds, we're seeing a lot of post-emergence burner herbicides going on. We could see some crop injury and some crop uh, damage due to herbicides at this point. But again, we don't really have to worry about any subsequent yield loss at this V, at these V4 growth stage uh, with any type of defoliation or herbicide crop injury. The next growth stage we're dealing here with the V5 growth stage where we have five open trifoliates. Um, this is when we typically begin to see rapid dry, dry matter accumulation begin. If you look in the lower left-hand corner here, we see a dry matter accumulation figure, and that's a V5 growth stage. It really starts to take off, and that plant puts on a significant amount of biomass rapidly from the V5 growth stage forward up, up through plant maturity. We keep counting um, leaves as we go forward, V6, V7, kind of get the picture. Um, and at this point, we typically start to see a trifoliate happen every three to five days. So again, this rapid dry matter accumulation. Once we get past V4, V5, every three to five days, you can count on a new trifoliate um, being um, placed on that soybean plant. And from this point, we start getting into and want to discuss the differentiation between indeterminate or determinate soybeans. Um, typically in the north, anything earlier than a 4.5 soybean would be a, an indeterminate soybean typically. Um, and then once we get somewhere between that 4.5 into a 5.5, we see some transition of, of these different types of uh, growth habits. And after a 5.5 is typically when we get more into most of those uh, soybean cultivars or varieties being determinate soybeans. So here's kind of a, a, a figure or some pictures that show the differences between indeterminate and determinate growth habits. Um, the, the, come, the main point we see is in an indeterminate bean, like we grow here in the northern part of the United States, we continue to see new vegetative growth begin after flowering. So we continue to put on trifoliates um, every three to five days. On the flip side, on a, on a determinate bean, we cease to see new flowering, uh, excuse me, we cease to see new vegetative growth soon after flowering begins. And usually what we see is a terminal raceme um, at the top of that plant. So again, it's a little bit different growth structure, a different growth structure and habit that is separate between an indeterminate and a determinate soybeans. The first stage we move into in terms of the reproductive growth stage would be the R1 growth stage. And this is where we have one open flower at any node on the main stem. Typically these flowers begin somewhere between the third and sixth nodes. And then we have flowering on the branches and then we start seeing on the main stem as well. Typically we can see either purple or white flower colors out there in a soybean field. And if you have a history of white mold, this is typically when the first application of a preventative fungicide would go out uh, to protect those flowers from an infection from the white mold spores. The next growth stage we go to is R2. Um, this is where we have an open flower at one of the two uppermost nodes on the main stem where we have a fully developed leaf. Uh, typically in today's modern genetics, we will have flowering for anywhere from three to five weeks. Um, on an interesting note, we can see anywhere from 20 to 80% of flowers produced be fully aborted. So again, that's one of the challenges we work with on the soybean side of things is this phenotypic plasticity, where we can see flowers continue to be um, developed, basically put on a soybean plant, but then also aborted. Uh, so it gives us a much greater time period for a soybean plant to adapt to environmental stressors, unlike we might see on, on the corn side of things. At this point of the growing season, a 50% defoliation uh, can reduce yield by 6%. That's why in the north, we can see some crop injury and yield loss caused by some of the burner herbicides on 
are used at this R1, R2 growth stage, and we can pick up yield loss in the north. In the south, we don't see that, and typically we might actually see a, a minor, a slight yield increase. But in the north, we really try to remind farmers, or CCA is not to use any type of uh, burner herbicide or at this point, uh, unless you're targeting something like white mold and you have a label like on, for lactofen. But again, just a couple key things to know about what's going on with that soybean plant at this R2 growth stage. The next growth stage is R3. Um, this is where a pod is 3 16th of an inch long at one of the four uppermost nodes on the main stem with a fully developed leaf. So that's an important caveat to know and kind of one of the challenges that what makes growth staging soybean a little more difficult than it is with corn. We always have to focus our scouting and our growth staging efforts on those top four nodes where we have an open trifoliate. That's why, again, it's, we can see some bouncing back and forth if you're out there scouting. And remember, we're putting a new trifoliate on every three to five days. So we can see soybeans bouncing back and forth between three, R3 and R4 and vice versa, all the way until we get uh, into that R7, R8 crow stage. Um, a couple interesting notes that we can see here is that this is where potassium uptake uptake rates peak shortly between that R2 and the R3 growth stage. And we could put anywhere from 3.5 to 5.2 pounds of fertilizer equivalent K2O per acre per day. So again, this is really when that plant actively growing, we're loading it full of uh, fertilizer equivalent K2O. Also, this is the last growth stage to treat for white mold. So again, if you're specifically targeting white mold, this is where that last fungicide application would go on. If you're looking at more of a prophylactic or a timing for some of the other um, fungicides, brown spot and whatnot, this is where we typically see that R3 application of other fungicides go out. Again, not that we're um, encouraging prophylactic applications given the challenges we're having with, with fungicide resistant uh, frog eye leaf spot out there. But again, these are where typically those types of applications are being targeted is at this R3 growth stage. The next growth stage would be R4. This is where a pod is three quarters of an inch long at one of the four uppermost nodes on the main stem. Again, that has that fully developed leaf. So again, remember to be looking for that fully developed leaf at the top of that plant, counting down four nodes. And that's where we're trying to de uh, determine what that growth stage is on soybean. At this stage, we have rapid pod development is occurring uh, and seeds are starting to develop. We see flowering occurring at the upper nodes. And at this growth stage is where we see that peak nitrogen uptake occurring in this R4 to R5 growth stage, where we could see three to four pounds of N per acre per day being uh, uptaken um, in, in that soybean plant. This is kind of an interesting picture of uh, pod development and seed development as we go through. And I think an important thing to note here is that the size of the developing pods and seeds at one of those four foremost nodes is where we wanna focus our efforts. Because if you look on a plant and you start counting and looking at pod or seed development at one of those lower nodes, we might have, uh, we might see seeds or pod development that is a growth stage greater than what we would expect it to be given when we're focusing on those top four nodes. So again, focus your efforts on those top four nodes is the point I wanna make. Otherwise, we're gonna not properly to determine what that growth stage is on soybean. The next growth stage is R5. Uh, this is beginning seed. This is where a seed is one eighth of an inch long in the pod. And again, one of those four uppermost nodes. At this time, we start seeing rapid seed filling um, begins, but we also start to see uh, root growth starting to slow down at this R5 growth stage. Uh, we also see this uh, redistribution of nutrients from the plant into that developing seed. At the R5 growth stage, 50% defoliation from a hail damage or for insect feeding can uh, decrease yield by anywhere up to 15 to 17%. Another important thing to note on the nitrogen side of things is that after R5.5, nitrogen uptake by the roots and existing nitrogen and vegetative, vegetative tissue begins to rapidly remobilize to the seed. So again, that, that seed is that sink or that source for the protein, that's where that nitrogen is going. So we see that rapid redistribution and pushing that nitrogen into that soybean uh, seed. And an interesting thing to note that at a, uh, at a 100 bushel soybean yield level, you're gonna be basically 
removing roughly 375 pounds of nitrogen from that field. So pretty, pretty interesting to note uh, with today's modern genetics, what we're doing in terms of the protein level and removing that nitrogen um, out of that soil and out of that plant via that seed. The next growth stage we're looking at is the R6 growth stage. Um, here we have a pod containing a green seed that fills that pod cavity, as you can see in this picture right here. And again, I have those four uppermost nodes. Um, we can see beans of many sizes across that plant, again, from top to bottom. And we're still seeing lots of nitrogen being accumulated from the soil and remobilized to that seed, again, i.e. as that protein source and remove it from that field. R7 growth stage is where we have one mature um, colored pod anywhere on that main stem. Typically it's on the lower part of the main stem, but it can be anywhere. And this, um, these images show you that the changing from that green pod all the way to this brown tawny color where we see maturity. Um, seeds at this R7 growth stage are approximately 60% moisture. And out in the north, we and if you're working with farmers that are doing irrigation, uh, we wanna have, make sure that we're continuing irrigation until and through this R7 growth stage, just to make sure we are not um, having water limitations on soybeans and limiting our yield uh, because of our turning the irrigation pumps off a little bit too early. The last growth stage we're looking at is the R8 growth stage. Um, this is where 90% of the pods have reached a mature pod color. Um, Mature pod color does not necessarily indicate that beans are ready to harvest. Typically, we need five to 10 days of drying weather uh, to, from once we hit that physiological maturity or that R8 growth stage to get us below that 15% moisture where we like to start uh, harvesting soybean at. Um, we also look in terms of the best storage and to, to, let, to um, minimize shrink, harvesting and storing at 13% moisture is optimal for soybean. With that, if you have any further questions on soybean growth or development, here is a link to our soybean growth and development guide on my website, which is www.coolbean.info. If you have any further questions, uh, again, go to my website or follow me on Twitter at BadgerBean. Uh, thank you for your time.